today we will learn the chapter 11. Chapter 11 title is the chromosome structure and the organelle DNA. Chapter 11 is composed of four subtitles. The first one is the large amount of DNA are fact into a cell and also we will learn about centromere and telomere and also we will learn the sequence variation and also we will learn finally we will learn some organelle DNA so in this slide I will, ex uh, I will explain one study example so this is the children from Roman, uh, Romanian orphanage okay. first to study the effect of early life experience on telomere length, geneticists study the children living in a state-run orphanage in Romania. At an early age, some of children were divided to, into two groups. So one group, the some of children were placed in first homes, so the others remained in the orphanage. So when the children were 6 to 10 years old, the researchers, researchers collected the sample of their DNA and measured the length of their telomere. So what is telomere? So telomere is located at the tip of the chromosome. So usually the telomere shorten after each replication. So after replication happens several times, so this is the telomere at the senescence, means that the telomere at all the people's, all the people's chromosome, they sh you will see that the telomere is very short, is like this. So it means that short telomere means that short life, and the long telomere is long life. So nowadays a lot of meditation want to lengthen the telomere length, okay? And finally, research demonstrate that children who lived in state-run orphanage had a shorter telomere, had a shorter telomere than the children from first homes. Maybe the children from first home will show like this, but children who lived in state-run orphanage will show the telomere is like this. So it means that early life experience affect the telomere length. Okay? So now in this slide I will like explain I will I I did not explain the detail mechanism so, but we will see the detail mechanism in the later slide. Okay? So in this slide I will explain the first subject. So large amount of DNA affect into a cell. So how can it happen? What is the answer? The answer is supercoiling. So due to the supercoiling, DNA can tightly be packed to a fit in a small spaces. There are two types of supercoiling. First one is positive supercoiling. Second one is negative supercoiling. The, the positive supercoiling means that add additional two turns, it means that it can it, it will over rotate it. So in this case is positive supercoiling occurs when DNA is over rotated. So the helix itself twists this like this. How about negative supercoiling? In ne negative supercoiling is the DNA is under rotated. It means that you can remove two turns at that negative supercoiling can happen so so in also when negative supercoiling occurs when DNA is under rotated and in this case is also the helix twisted on itself in the opposite direction for example in positive positive uh, supercoiling it, it will induce right-handed right-handed twist and also in this case is it, in negative supercoiling, it will it also make the supercoiling, but it will be the the left-handed supercoiling. Okay, so this is a supercoiling. So uh, how can how can we re relax the the supercoiling? 
the answer is topoisomerase. So there are two types of topoisomerase. So usually topoisomerase one is cut one strand. Over, okay, another the topoisomerase two is cut it both end. The app that the, this enzyme is can remove turns in the cores. So topoisomerase is relaxed can relax the, the supercoiling. In this slide, I will solve concept check one. The question is that a DNA molecules 300 base pair long has 20 complete rotation. So this DNA molecule is A, positively supercoiled, B, negatively supercoiled, and C, relaxed. What is the answer? Okay. The, the answer is to, to answer the question, so we have to understand the concept. So, okay, in the last class, we learned that the BDNA, so most of cases DNA is BDNA, so BDNA is right-handed helix, so they have the, each turn, they have 10 base pairs. So means that each turn they have the, uh, the, the distance is 3.4, nanometer okay so it means that uh, because of the they have 300 base pairs wrong it means that they should have the 30 30 complete turn complete rotation but this dna is the 20 complete rotation it means that they are 10 under rotated so it means that they are negatively supercoiled. The answer is B. So in this slide, I will explain how bacterial chromosome can be fed into a cells. So usually the bacterial genome have a single and circular DNA molecules. So this is the bacterial genome. So this is the they are single and circular DNA molecules. So this is the picture to show that bacterial cell possesses a single and circular chromosome shown here is emerging from a ruptured bacterial cell. And also DNA appears as a clump called the nucleoid. So this is the eukaryote and this is prokaryote. Eukaryote has the nucleus but prokaryote, they don't have the nucleus. Instead, they have the nucleoid. So we call it as the nuclear body, or in Korean, we call it as hexangche. So DNA is clumps. So appears as clumps called the nucleoid. And also, bacterial DNA is highly folded into a series of twisted loop a series of twisted loop is like this and also end of the loop are most likely held in place by some proteins so this is the how bacterial chromosome can be fed into a cell so, so usually the, the important thing is the DNA is highly folded into a series a series of twisted loop and the end of the loop are held uh, most likely held in place by some proteins like this okay so in this slide i will explain how eukaryotic chromosome can be fed into our cells so let's start from the diverse strand dna the dna so at the simplest level Chromatin is the double-stranded helical structure of DNA. Except that DNA is complex with a histone to form the nucleosome. So this is we call it as nucleosome. So usually the they are consist of eight nucleosome. Each each nucleosome consists of eight histone proteins. So this is the, uh, the basic uh, concept is the nucleosome. So nucleosome is fundamental refitting unit of the chromatins. So they are composed of eight histone proteins. 
uh, they have the two set of the H2A. So this is H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. They have two set. So another set they also have H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. So around the around the histone proteins, DNAs laps. 1.65 times so DNA length is around 145 to 147 base pairs so this is the nucleosome so we also call it as a chromatosome so nucleosome with histone H1 proteins we call it as a chromatosome so between chromatosome and between chromatosome, there is the linking. So there is a link DNA. So link DNA is linked chromatosome with adjacent chromatosome. The length is three, uh, 30, 30 to the 40 base pairs. So this is how uh, uh, we measure the DNA length of the nucleosome. So this is the, the uh, nucleosome and this is the nucleosome. So first, so the, 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 the poem is bees, bees, bees on string, B of chromatin. So uh, the small amount, so small amount of nucleus. So after we treated the nucleus, so cleaves the each string between the bead. So cleaves the string between the beads and releasing the individual bead attached to the about 200 base pair. But after we treated the nucleus again, all the unprotected DNA between the beads can be degraded and the living or core of a protein attached to the length is the 145 and 147. So it means that the, in nucleosome, so DNA is 145 and 147. So link DNA will be the around 30 to 40 base pair. So that's why, based on this experiment, people found the length of the DNA and the length of the link DNA. Uh, the length of the DNA in nucleosome and the length of the link DNA. So after the nucleum was made, so we will make the three nanometer fibers. So usually the nucleosome it folds up to produce three nanometer fiber is like this. They are folded like this. And these three uh, 30 nanometer fiber forms 300 nanometer loop is like this. They make the loop like this. And this loop and this 300 nanometer loop are complexed and they are complex, they are complex. And at that, uh, they are folded and they, can, they will produce 250 nanometer wide fiber like this. At that, at that uh, the tight coiling of the 250 nanometer fiber produces the chromatids of the chromosome is like this. So chromatid means that tight coiling of 250 nanometer fiber so pro, uh, produces chromatid is like this. So this is the, uh, the eukaryotic chromosome structure. Based on these structures, large amount of DNA can be fed into a cell like this. So in one chromosome, uh, they, one chromosome it contains multiple, 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 lots of, lots of, lots of the, the DNA information. 
So chromatin has the euchromatin region and heterochromatin region. Uh, in this slide, table 11.1 table to show the characteristics of euchromatin and heterochromatin. So this is the chromosome. Uh, this is a centromere and telomere is located here. So usually the euchromatin is located in the chromosome arm. So this is euchromatin region. And also the heterochromatin is located usually near the centromere. And also the telomere region is the heterochromatin region. The, characteristic, the main characteristics of the euchromatin is the less condensed but heterochromatin is the more condensed like this. So in this case, the big difference between the euchromatin and heterochromatin is this one, transcription. In euchromatin region, the transcription is actively, the, the, uh, the transcription can be happens in actively, but in the heterochromatin region, Transcription can be happen infrequently. So, if the your gene is located in the euchromatin region, that gene can be actively transcribed. But some gene is located in the heterochromatin region, the 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 gene gene cannot be actively transcribed. So, this is the main. Uh, the, this is the difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin. So if you want to learn the, some detailed information of euchromatin and heterochromatin, uh, you had better take the uh, epigenetics course in next, uh, next semester. Next semester, I also open, I will open the epigenetics. In epigenetics, so we will cover in detail the, some information about euchromatin and the heterochromatin. So in this slide is concept check two. The question is the neutralizing their fast charges in histone proteins. So histone protein usually the, they are fast charges like this. So also the DNA is negatively charged. So usually the histone proteins bind the DNA is more tightly because they are positive and DNA is negative. But the question is that neutralizing their positive charges in histone protein would have which effect on the histone proteins? The answer will be number B. So histone protein would separate from the DNA. The number answer will be number B. So in this slide, I will explain the changes in chromatin structure. So this is the regular chromatin structure is like this. They have the, the short arm, they have the long arm is like this. So now I will show you the some changes in chromatin structure, which we call it as polythene chromosome. In Korean, we call it as a dasa yamsekche. So polythene chromosome is a giant chromosome. It's very big like this and giant chromosomes are found in certain tissue of the drospilla, especially in drospilla. So usually the, uh, this uh, giant chromosome is found in the salivary gland. So this is the uh, uh, drospilla the, uh, chromosome. They have the three, uh, three pairs of autosome, chromos uh, chromosome, uh, chromosome 2 and chromosome 4, pa uh, chromosome four pairs chromosome 3 pairs and in the case of the male they have XY in the case of the female they have the XX but this polyten chromosome is created by repeated rounds of the DNA replication with no cell division for example this is one example so the, the diploid is the replicated but there was the no cell division. So finally, there will be the, the um, tetraploid, but 
in these cases, they combine to each other. So, so they will make the very big or uh, giant chromosome is like this. And uh, also polythene chromosome is uh, appears striped with uh, alternate, uh, alternate dark and white bands. So this is the day some region they, we can see that a uh, uh, dark region, dark band, and some region we can see the uh, the right band. So this is we magnify this vision. So some reason is the darkly stained or uh, dark band region. The other some the other region is a right band region. So this is we, the right band region. We call it as a chromosome fluff. So we uh, we will see it. We will see it in the next slide. So chromosomal fluffs is the, the bands of the polytene chromosome. So this is chromosomal perf. Uh, so this is the, the bands of a polytene chromosome become enlarged. They become enlarged. This band become enlarged to form swelling called fluffs. So this is the chromosome, uh, chromosomal fluffs in the polytene chromosome. And this is also chromosomal fluff. So this region is the uh, the chromosome status is relaxed. So very relaxed chroma chromatin and where in this region active transcription is taking place. So around the, this the uh, uh, darkly darkly stained region, in this region is chromatin is the highly complex, compact. So in this region, uh, the dense region, the transcription is not taking place very well, but however, in the chromosomal props region, this region is a relaxed chromatin region where the active transcription is taking place. So in this previous slide, we see that how to check the changes in chromatin structure. So usually we stain the, the DNA and uh, Dark region means that uh, uh, highly condensed region and also light stained region we call it as the profs and this is the relaxed chromatin region and this region uh, and active transcription is taking place. But in addition to the uh, DNA staining, another method is there. The name is the DNA is one sensitivity. So this is one example. So this is condensed chromatin, and this is often chromatin. So after we treated DNA is one, and this in this condensed chromatin region, there is no DNA is one digestion. But if you see here in open chromatin region, there was the uh, uh, DNA degradation by the DNA is one. So in open chromatin region means that transcription is actively, uh, transcription is actively uh, trans uh, happens, but in this region there is no transcription. So it means that this region is very sensitive to DNA one, and this region is insensitive to DNA one. So it means that. DNA one sensitivity is correlate with the gene expression. Sensitivity region means that the gene expression is highly expressed. So DNA one sensitivity suggests the chromatin structure changes in the course of transcription. So this is the one example to show the DNA one sensitivity. The question was that. Is the chromatin structure altered in transcriptions? So the method is that we use the DNA one. We checked, we measured DNA one sensitivity on different tissue and at different times in the development. So this is the uh, uh, chicken DNA. So ch chicken DNA has the. Uh, one chromosome, they have the embryo embryonic globin gene, and, and also they have the adult global, uh, globin gene, alpha D and alpha A. So 
so they check the so the, they check the the erythro blast. What is the erythro blast? Erythro blast is the nucleated cell. They have the nucleated cell like this. So they are occurring in the red bone marrow, and the erythro blast is the is very important for the development of the red blood cell. Finally, erythro blast will become the red blood cell. Okay. So the, in these cases, we collected a sample from erythroblast and also erythroblast, erythroblast, but the other sample is we collected the sample from the brain. Uh, in the sample of the erythroblast, uh, in these cases, we collected the sample uh, uh, first 24 hours. And this, in this sample we collected is the five days erythroblast and this blast with this erythroblast we collected in 14 days erythroblast the brain cell is we also collected throughout the, the development okay so if we uh, after we collected erythroblast first 24 hours it means that so hemoglobin synthesis is the is, is not initiated so in this case is none of the globin globin gene are sensitive to dna1 digestion okay but uh, at 5 days uh, globin synthesis has begun so all the gene sensitive to dna1 but the embryo, embryonic globin, uh, globin gene U is the most sensitive. It means that uh, uh, embryo, uh, embryonic globin gene U is actively transcribed, transcribed uh, before, uh, between the 21 days to 5 days. And also, we collected the sample at 14 days erythroplast. And, and then we, we found that uh, this 14 days embryo so uh, means that only adult hemoglobin gene is expressed. So in this case is the only adult globin gene is most sensitive. It's like DNA is one sensitive is like this. Okay, and the other embryonic globin gene is insensitive but however the brain cell so in the brain cell we also collected the DNA and we checked the, the, the DNA is one insensitivity in the U and the alpha D and alpha A so globin gene in the brain uh, which does not produce the globin remain insensitive throughout the development so conclusion was that uh, sensitivity of DNA to uh, to digestion by DNA one is correlated with the gene expression, and also suggesting that chromatin structure changes in the course of the transcription. So it means that uh, between the one day to five days, uh, the embry embryonic globin gene is actively transcribed. And between the five, between five days and fourteen days, the so adult globin gene is actively transcribed. But in the brain cell, brain cell to, uh, usually do not produce the globin, so they are remains insensitive throughout the development. So epigenetic changes, also especially the methylation, it also can alter the chromatin structure. So this is the, if the methylation can happen, it means that it can induce uh, the condensation of chromatin structures like this. Or if there is no methylation, chromatin structure is, can be decondensed like this. So especially the epigenetic changes, especially methylation, it also can alter the chromatin structure. So okay. So this is the, the, the mouse coat color, so agotirocos.
the Agoti locus. The, this is the structure of the wild type Agoti genes. So Agoti gene, if the Agoti gene is actively transcribed, the coat color will be the brown. So if the Agoti gene is not actively transcribed, there is no expression, it means that they will make the, this black color is like this. But in the Agoti locus, the Agoti gene, especially the promoter region, uh, in promoter region there are uh, a variation in DNA methylation. So if the, there is the highly methylation, it means that uh, in this region is highly condensed. It means that uh, transcription factor cannot bind to the promoter region. It means that there is no IgoT gene expression. So finally, they will make the uh, black color the mouse. But if there is no methylation, so it means that transcription factor uh, the the structure will be the very decondensed like this. Now that uh, several transcription factor can easily bind to the promoter region. Now that the IgoT gene can be expressed and the coat color will be the brown is like this. So if you want to learn the de detailed information of the epigenetic changes and also the effect of epigenetic changes in gene expression, you had better take uh, the epigenetic course next semester. Okay? I will open the epigenetic course uh, next semester. So in this slide, I will explain the second subject. The subject is that eukaryotic chromosome possesses centromere and telomere. So in this slide, I will explain the centromere, and next slide, I will explain the telomere. So what is centromere? In Korean, we call it as Dongwonche. So in chapter 2, we already learned that the chromosome structure the, this, uh, the, this region is the centromere. Centromere is the attachment point for spindle microtuber. So initial, actually, the, the actual the attachment point is the kinetic core. So this region is the centromere region of chromosome. So uh, in the, this centromere region, there is a kinetic core is located here. So actually, the microtuber attach to the uh, kinetic core. So centromere is the constricted region, like the constricted region of chromosome where spindle fever attach. The, actually, the spindle fever attach it to the kinetic core. And this the centromere is essential for proper chromosome movement in the mitosis and the meiosis. So usually, the, actually, the apt uh, microtuber attached to the, the centromere and especially the kinetic core. After that, they can move to the each pore and after that, they will make the each uh, the uh, daughter cell is like this. But chromosome fragment that wreck the centromere are lost in mitosis and meiosis. So this is the mechanism. Okay? So this is the cell and this is the nucleus. So there is a, a one chromosome is located here, but the chromosome breaks, one chromosome is breaks and produces the a chromosome breaks, produces two types of fragment those with the centromere and those with without the centromere. So in mitosis, uh, especially during the anaphase, the uh, mm, so each fragment with centromere attach it to spindle microtuber and move to the spindle pore. However, but this one, this one, a fragment wrecking or centromere does not attach to spindle microtuber and is usually lost from the nucleus. It cannot go to the nucleus. So apt cytokinesis, apt uh, 
aptocytokinases is the chromosome fragment uh, is uh, this chromosome fragment are uh, degraded. So the important thing so in this based on this result we will see that the importance of the centromere. So centromere is the essential for proper chromosome movement in mitosis and meiosis. So chromosome fragment that lacks centromere are lost in the, are lost in the mitosis and the meiosis. So in this slide I will explain the telomere. So what is telomere? The telomere is located at the ends of the chromosome, especially at the tip of the chromosome, it's like this. So telomere is consists of the telomeric sequence. For example, in this case is TTA GGG is telomeric sequence. TTA GGG, TTA GGG, TTA GGG. TTA GGG. So TTA GGG is telomeric sequence. How about the another organism? For example, it's tetrahyaminal, protoarzone. They have the telomeric sequence is TTG GGG is like this. So table 11.2 uh, summarizes the DNA sequence typically found in telomeres of various organisms. It's like this. So telomere is provides a means to replicate at the end of linear chromosome. So this is the lagging strand of the Ogazaki fragment. So at the end, removal of a primer. So removal of a primer leads to the shortening of the chromosome after each round of replication. So usually the chromosome shortening eventually lead to cell death. At this case is the uh, telomerase. So in this case is RNA sequence in telomerase act as the template for DNA and this enzyme uh, as the telomeric sequence at the three prime ends of the chromosome. So they fill the uh, gap is like this. So in this case, is the, uh, finally the original length of the chromosomal DNA has been restored. So this was the original length of the chromosome. Finally, the original length of chromosome is restored. It's like this. So that's why, that's why we, we think that telomere is provides a means to replicate at the ends of the linear chromosome. At the end of a linear chromosome, there is the telomere is located here. This sequence is the uh, means to replicate it at the end of a linear chromosome. So tel uh, usually the telomerase, telomerase enzyme help to fill the gap is like this. So from this line, I will explain the third subject. The name is the Eukaryotic DNA contains several classes of sequence variation. So first of all, we have to know the C value. What is C value? C value is the amount of DNA per cell. So organism they are deeper in the C value. For example, this is table 11.3 to show the genome size difference in the various organisms. So let's start from the bacteriophage. So the bacteriophage is a virus and their C value is only 50,000. How about E. coli? E. coli is prokaryote and their genome size is the 4.6 million. So their C value is 4.6 million. So from east to salamander, this group is the belong to the eukaryote. And how about the yeast? Their genome size is 12 million. Now we are interested in the Homo sapiens human. Our human C value is 3.2 billion. 
But you will see that the corn and salamander, you will see that the C value is the, uh, larger, than, larger than the human. What's the reason? Why the corn and salamander, they are large, their genome size is larger than human? We think that human genome is more complex than corn and salamander. The why the genome size is the corn and salamander is bigger than human? Because the corn and salamander has lots of pseudogene. But the pseudogene means that the gene cannot be expressed. We don't know why, but the corn, the plant, the corn and salamander, they have lots of pseudogene compared to the human. That's why their C value is larger than the human. Okay? So in this slide, I will explain the another special characteristics of the eukaryotic DNA. They show that they show the difference in DNA denaturation. So what is the DNA denaturation? So DNA is usually the double helix, and they are held by the hydrogen bonding. For example, adenine between adenine and thymine, there is the Double, hydro, uh, double hydrogen bonding and between guanosine and cytosine there is a three pairs of hydrogen bonding is like this so this is the double helix DNA so if we increase the temperature the hydrogen bonding is a breakdown and they will make the, the two single stranded DNAs it means that the relative absorbance at 220 nanometer is uh, increased uh, like this. Okay, so so melting curve. So this is the melting curve, and the TM means is that the, so melting is begins here because the relative absorbance start to begin here. So this is the starting point. And maybe after that, after temperature is increased, finally they will become the plateaus like this. So this is the melting ends. So TM means that TM means that the midpoint of the melting curve. So this is the around the 1.35, and this is the midpoint. So this is the midpoint of the melting curve, and the TM means that the, the this temperature, this temperature is, will be the 70 or uh, uh, 72 or 73 centigrade degree. So this is TM. So if the the DNA have the increased GC content, means that the TM will be increased. If the DNA, they don't have the last of the GC content, it means that their TM will be lower than the, the higher, higher GC content. So the eukaryotic DNA shows the difference in DNA denaturation based on the GC content. So usually the, also the denatured, the DNA can be re renatured they will become to the double-stranded DNA when DNA will renature when temperature is cooling down is like this okay so in this slide I will explain some uniqueness in eukaryotic genes so eukaryotic genes show the, the gene family for example so, for example, uh, let's start from the example of the hemoglobin. So, our hemoglobin has the, the alpha chain and the beta chain, two alpha chain and two beta chain. So, initially, our alpha chain and the beta chain has this common in sister, but they divided to alpha chain group and also beta chain group. So, an alpha chain group, they have the uh, they also divided two, and one become the alpha chain, the other become the zeta chain. How about the beta chain? Beta chain also they have another common ancestor, 
update they divided to beta chain, delta chain, gamma chain, and epsilon chain. So usually the alpha chain and zeta chain is gene family. They are very similar to each other. But if you see the alpha globin gene cluster, they are located in chromosome 16. If you see here in the, nearly the similar region, alpha 1 gene and alpha 2 gene in zeta chain gene is located in nearly, nearly the similar location. Between them, there is also another pseudo non-functional gene. So it means that similar but not identical copies of unique DNA sequence uh, they show some families like this. They are located in the cluster. Another example is the beta globin gene cluster. This beta globin gene cluster is located in the chromosome 11. For example, they have the beta, delta, gamma, and also epsilon. So they have the uh, they have the similar, similar but not identical copies of unique gene. So this gene, uh, we call it as the gene family. They are located in nearly similar uh, location. So they make the cluster like this. They make the families like this. And also the uniqueness in eukaryotic gene, they have pseudo gene. In the case of the alpha gene cluster, they have two pseudo gene. In case of the beta globin gene cluster, they also have another pseudo gene. Pseudo gene means that do not code for functional mRNA or protein, so they cannot be translated. But in eukaryotic DNA, we have lots of the pseudo gene. However, prokaryotic DNA, they don't have the pseudogene, okay? So this is the uniqueness in eukaryotic DNA. First one is gene family, and second one is pseudogene. So in this line, I will explain the, for the first subject, the organelle DNA has unique characteristics. So where is DNA? So we already learned that DNA is located inside of the nucleus. However, some organelle, for example, mitochondria and chloroplast have their own DNA. So this is mitochondrion figure and this is chloroplast. So they have their own DNA like this and also they have their own DNAs. So this DNA encodes some polypeptides. For example, in the mitochondria, the polypeptide is very important role in the mitochondrial function. And also the DNA, the chloroplast DNA encodes some polypeptides, which are, which are only used in the chloroplast. And also mitochondria has the the mitochondrial DNA encodes uh, the rRNA and also tRNA, which only can be used inside of the mitochondria. And also chloroplast is there, so chloroplast DNA also encodes their own rRNA and their own tRNA. This rRNA and this tRNA only can be used in the inside of the chloroplast. Okay? So some people think about why might only mitochondria and chloroplast has their own DNA. So this is the people proposed the endothene biotic theory. So it means that actually the mitochondria and chloroplast were once free living bacteria. The reason why both organelles are similar to the bacteria and also the DNA sequence found within them are also similar to bacteria. For example, you see here 
This structure is, looks like the bacteria. How about the chloroplast? This structure is also looks like the bacteria. Okay, so this is the, the some detailed information of the endothin biotic theory. First, approximately 1 billion to 1.5 billion ago. So this is the anaerobic, anaerobic eukaryotic cell, and there was also aerobic bacteria. So anaerobic eukaryotic cell engulf the aerobic bacteria cell through endocytosis. So after that, the, aero, the aerobic endosymbiont evolved into the mitochondria, like this. So that's why the mitochondria has their own DNA, but uh, their DNA sequence found within the mitochondria is all nearly similar to the bacteria. Uh, the DNA sequence which can be found in the bacteria. Okay, and also likewise now also the, the this eukaryotic cell engulf photosynthesizing a uh, U bacterium, we call it as cyanobacterium. So after the engulf, after they engulf the this cyano, uh, cyanobacterium by endocytosis, after that so led to the evolution of a modern eukaryotic cell with a mitochondria with a mitochondria and chloroplast it's like this why because the, the dna sequence which can be found in chloroplast is nearly similar to the dna sequence which can be found in the bacteria it's like this so this is the um, uh, most reliable theory uh, nowadays. Okay. So in this slide, I will explain the uniparental inheritance of organelle encoded trait, especially in mitochondria. So this is the here is the cell of euglena. So individual cell may contain many mitochondria. Okay. So this is euglena, and the nucleus is stained with the red color, and the mitochondria is stained with green. The green color is mitochondria. It means that one cell contains multiple mitochondria. How about the yellow color? Yellow color is mitochondria, uh, mitochondrial DNA. So this is mitochondrial DNA. So individual cells may contain many mitochondria and each mitochondria has with uh, several copies of mitochondrial genome. So this is the mitochondria, uh, this is the one cell, they have multiple, multiple mitochondria and each mitochondria has multiple copies of the mitochondrial DNA. And also they show that uniparental inheritance. For example, what is uniparental? So previously, in chapter 8, we learned that uniparental disomy is that both chromosomes are inherited from the same parent. So this, uh, this one induced uniparental disomy. However, in the, especially in the mitochondrial DNA, so animal mitochondrial DNA exclusively from the female parents. How it happens? So this is some mechanism. So sperm has their own the genome, the DNA, haploid DNA, this is the haploid DNA, and also they have their own the mitochondria. But after fertilization, sperms genome, sperm's haploid genome can go inside of the egg and also sperm's mitochondria can enter the enter into the egg but this mitochondria is the 
uh, degraded because the this the sperm uh, the mitochondria which is located in the sperm is attacked with the uh, ubiquitin and that's why the this mitochondria attacked with ubiquitin is degraded by proteasome that's why animal mitochondria is exclusively from the female parents so the eggs uh, the egg also has their own mitochondria but the mitochondria is not tagged with the uh, ubiquitin so, the, so only the uh, the uh, only the mitochondrial dna uh, comes from the female can be existing okay so this is the uniparental inheritance of the organelle encoded trait, especially in the mitochondria. So in this slide, I will explain the replicative segregation during mitosis. So for example, each cell has hundreds to thousands of mitochondria. So each cell has hundreds and thousands of mitochondria. This is the mitochondria is like this okay but we have to know some specific terminology heteroplasmic cell so this heteroplasmic cell possesses possesses organelle which contains two distinct variety of dna for example the the red colors mitochondria contains wild type dna for example the other blue color mitochondria contains mutant DNA. So in these cases, if the organelle contains two distinct variety of DNA, in these cases we call it as heteroplasmic cell. Except that during the cell division, during the cell division, the mitochondria is segregated randomly. For example, in this case, is the, for example, wild type mitochondria has one, two, three, four. How about the mutant mitochondria? So they have one, two, three, four. But during the cell division, in one cell, they have three wild type mitochondria, but the other, uh, and also they have one mutant mitochondria. But the other cell, on the contrary, they have three mutant mitochondria and they are only have the one wild type mitochondria. After that, each cell is replicate its mitochondria. After that, also again the segregate randomly. They, uh, they can segregate mitochondria is randomly during cell division. After that, each cell they can do replication of a mitochondria, and also they do the land, the mitochondria also can be randomly segregated. So mitochondria segregate randomly. So finally, most of the resulting cell will be the heteroplasmic cells like this. They are composed of the wild type mitochondria they also have the mutant mitochondria but sometimes just by chance some cells may receive only one type of mitochondria so this is we call it as homoplasmic uh, cell and also this one is also they become the homoplasmic cell so this is the we call it as the replicative segregation during mitosis, especially the uh, replicative segregation of a mitochondria during the mitosis. In this slide, I will summarize the traits encoded by mitochondrial DNA. Especially in the East, there is a protein, protein mutation. Protein mutation can be happen the deletion in some of the mitochondrial DNA including the genes which plays or which play important role in the oxidative phosphorylation. 
So this is a wild type, the normal colony, east colony, but this is a petite colony, it's very small compared to the normal. So that's why the petite mutant are unable to carry out oxidative phosphorylation. In the neurospora, this is a neurospora. Also, there is another mutation, the POKI mutation. POKI mutation is mutations in mitochondrial DNA, including the cytochrome, cytochrome gene. So this is the uh, oxidative phosphorylation. Cytochrome gene is very important role in the ele uh, electron transfer. So it means that in the POKI mutation, they show that impaired mitochondrial function. It means that on also their growth rate is, will be very slow. How about in human? The very famous mitochondrial DNA, uh, DNA the disease is the MORP. MORP. MORF is, the, is like this. This is the full name of the MORF. So this is the, uh, the, the patient who, who got the, this disease, MORF disease. They have seizure. Uh, they have seizure and also they have uh, lots of the symptoms like this. But important thing is mitochondrial, the, uh, the mitochondrial genetics. Okay, this is mitochondrial genetics. So if the unaffected father and unaffected mother is their mate, after that all of their offspring, the daughter and son will be affected. How about in the other cases? Father is affected. The father has the mutation in the mitochondrial gene, but the mother is unaffected. In this case, is all of their offspring will be the normal. So this is the mitochondrial genetics. Okay, all of this MERP disease, LHO, LHON disease, and several mitochondrial disease, and also POKI mutation, petite mutation. In this case, we have to understand this mitochondrial genetics. So in this slide, I will explain the mitochondrial genome. The so table 11.4 summarizes the size of the mitochondrial genome in selected organism. So this is the how about the yeast? The mitochondrial genome is only about 80, 85,000 base pair. How about the whole genome size in the yeast? The whole genome size is about 12 million. So it means that mitochondrial genome is very size is very small. How about Homo sapien? How about human? The human is the, our mitochondrial genome size is only sixteen thousand. How about the full genome size of the human? Human size is the three three point two billion base pairs. So it means that mitochondrial genome is are very small. But uh, they are uh, the and also so for example and also in some plant their mitochondrial genome size is about 2.4 million 2.4 million so it means that mitochondrial genome size is very great trees like this okay. So in this slide I will explain human mitochondrial DNAs. So human mitochondrial DNA is circularized like this. So as we already seen in the previous slide, we said we saw that so mitochondrial organelle is similar to bacteria and also their DNA sequence is also nearly similar to the DNA in the bacteria. So they have they have circular DNA. And also the length is 16, uh, 16,000 base pairs. They contain the less non-coding DNA. So it means that all of the sequence, they have the coding DNA. For example, they have two 
RRR encode two RRRNA. One is the 16S RRNA, the other is 12 RRNA. They also encode 12, uh, 22. 22 tRNA, for example, this tRNA is encoded lucine, valine, penylalanine, threonine, and also there are several tRNA, and they also encode 13 protein, especially start from cytochrome B, so ND5, ND4, ND4L, ND3, and cytochrome oxidase 3, ATPI subunit 6, and something else is like this. So in this slide, I will explain the yeast mitochondrial DNA. The size of the yeast mitochondrial DNA is 85,000. How about human? Human is 16,000. So it means that five times as large as human, and also they contain less non-coding RNA, a uh, non-coding DNA. It means that all of the region encode the, the genes. And also they encode two rRNA and also 25 tRNA and also they encode 16 polypeptides. So in this slide, I will explain the flowering plant mitochondrial DNA. Flowering plant in Korean we call it as a sokshishingmul. So they show that extensive size variation. So we know that this is due to recombination. Okay, let's start from the tunip. Tunip in Korean, we call it as sumu. The tunip, the mitochondrial genome, is consists of the master circle. It's about uh, 218,000 base pair, but they have two repeat. One repeat start from the A to B, the other repeat starts from the A to B. Okay, okay. And this uh, this repeat we designated the, the blue color, and this repeat we designated the red color. So crossing over happens between two direct repeats. So crossing over happens at that they will make the two smaller circles like this. In this curve, it's become the large A is the red color, and the large B. Uh, large B is the blue color. And after that, they will make the circle. And this one is they will make the large A is the blue color, and and also large B will be the red color. And this curve is about 135,000, and the other circle will be the 18, uh, 18. Uh, uh, the other circle will be the 8, 83,000 base pairs. So in this slide, I will explain the evolution of mitochondrial DNAs. As I mentioned earlier, mitochondrial DNA is maternally inherited. So this is the, the, the mitochondrial DNA inherited from the maternal lineage, lineage, lineage like this. So and also mitochondrial DNAs are identical from to generation to generation to generation. So once the mitochondrial mutations occur in germ cell of a female, so mutation is also transmitted to all of their offsprings. How about nuclear DNAs? So nuclear DNA is inherited from all ancestors, ancestors, because we received one copy from father, one copy from mother. But mitochondrial DNA is just the inherited, maternally inherited. So it means that so my, my, my mitochondrial DNA is exactly the same as my mother's mitochondrial DNA. And my mother's mitochondrial DNA is exactly the same as grandmother's mitochondrial DNA. Grandmother's mitochondrial DNA is exactly the same as grand-grandmother's mitochondrial DNA. So it means that maternal lineage can be traced back, traced back, and can allow the identification of common ancestors. Okay. So and also, so damage to the mitochondrial DNA is the associated with aging. 
because that so many human genetic disease associated with mitochondrial DNA s appears in the middle age or later. Also, the oxidative phosphorylation capacities decline with age. So it means that so based on this result, people think that maybe the damage to mitochondrial DNA is associated with aging. So if this is mitochondrial DNA. So usually the, uh, during the aging, so mitochondrial DNA dysfunction is happen. So they will increase the ROS. So maybe the ROS will attack the mitochondrial DNA. But however, the mechanism of the age-related mitochondrial DNA damage is unknown. So if you are interested to in this field, so if you reveal the specific mechanism, so you, you will get the Nobel Prize. Okay? Okay, so based on this result, we just assumption that damage to mitochondrial DNA is associated with the aging. But we don't know the exact mechanism yet. So, yeah, so in this uh, chapter, so we today we learned chapter 11. Chapter 11 was the chromosome structure and the organelle DNAs. The first we learned the, the large amount of DNA is packed into a cell, and also we learned the centromere and telomere. And also we learned some key characteristics in the eukaryotic DNA and also finally we learned the organelle DNA. Okay, today we will finish the class. Thank you.